some men wait a lifetime to cry.
So I started there and I made some brief, brief notes. And you want me just to ramble? Yeah. I, I, that's, that's and then you can cut and edit in place so there's those nice little jumps, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Because I will, unfortunately, I'll probably just ramble a lot. Try and be concise and then prompt me. Um, the basic philosophy behind the video pieces is comes from an interest in performance art that I've had for years and years since being at school at the U. And I usually focus in sculpture class because I want them to deal with space and that's where I deal with a lot of conceptual issues. I like throwing weird concepts at, concepts at the high school students there because they don't get a lot of conceptual stuff in school from my perspective having talked to them. So in sculpture, we do a lot of things working with three dimensions, and I want them to see the inside of a television as a space, instead of just someone standing here going, la, 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 I can play rock and roll, jump, jump, jump. I want them to think about this space, where you get closer, and where you get way far away, and how you can move in and out of this space somehow. You don't just stand inside a TV. And I want them to look at their world, be aware of their world, because that's sort of our common thread anymore. We don't all go to church. We've all seen Campbell's Soup, but that's kind of old hat. But we've all watched television or we're all absorbed in video, and, and just having a video camera in a room really tends to either excite students. It excites them a lot. They always say, are we on tape? And then they always try and stay out of the way of the camera, except they're going like this with their hands. And so I tried to tie in the performance art element to deal with the sense of the space, the various media, because I have a lot of different medias, and um, the common language. And I found that I'd bring this into the classroom, 
and there was a lot of hesitation to actually get in front of a, a camera and perform. They're like, oh, but you'll see me, you'll see me, oh, I don't want to be seen. And it's like, okay, well, let's, usually what I do is I say, okay, you have to do a video performance, you have to deal with that sense of space, you have to have movement somehow. And it doesn't have to be just plain movement, it can be bouncing, you can ring, you can turn around, but you have to deal with the space. I make them do it in groups, usually three or four works about the best. If you have like six people, it doesn't work very well. And I've, through my ed education, I've learned, I've taken creative movement classes, and the creative movement classes, they're, they talk about different ways of moving. You can float. And you can slash, and you can dab. And we go through some movement exercises, and I talk about how to move in space and how to move with more than just your body. Move, just make your arms slash, make your head slash, slash with your feet. Do, we do some, it's basically um, sort of dance movements. And I just don't try not to use the word dance. They figure it out after a while. But if you say we're going to do some dance, they all clutch and go, oh. but if you say we're going to do movement, they're like, oh, oh, okay, that's cool. What's, what's movement about? And so I move around, and I'm right in there with them. And I encourage a lot of play. And they say, well, I, I don't want to be seen. So it's like, okay, you don't have to. You, you can do all of this without having your face in the camera. Just use your hands. We'll put, and, and I'll take and physically move the camera and put the camera on the floor in front of them. And I have a monitor set up, so usually behind the camera or off to one side so they can see what it looks like. And if I set the camera on the floor, they realize that they can move back and forth with just their feet. I say, okay, now use your feet and create a ringing motion. And so that they can say, oh, and that, that frees up a lot of the anxiety about being in front of a video camera. Because it's like, oh, you don't have to actually see my face, so I can kind of hide. And I bring out a lot of props. I bring out anything. If they're, if they're real intimidated, I'll give them stuff. And I'll say, okay, use this. Take this and deal with this in the space. And having a, t a camera on and having a TV up so they can look at the monitor and just kind of watch what's going on, they get sort of drawn into the whole process. And usually after they've played with it for a day, 20 minutes a day, two days, three days, they forget about not wanting to be seen and it doesn't become an issue anymore. I encourage a lot of experimentation. Well, if you don't know, try. Try this. Try that. What happens with the birdcage? Okay. Now you have this as a space. What does that look like? And you can see, oh, it's like kind of being in jail or something. Yeah, okay, now take the bottom out, which slides out of here, put that over your head. And then what do you see? How does that look visually? Um, some of them that really, um, we use sound a lot. I try and make strange sounds. If you don't know what that is, you can make some really interesting things happen. Um, I don't even know if this will make a sound. You might be able to hear it. When that's off camera and you can't see it, you don't know what it is. And you can, and it's like, oh, what's that noise? Um, lots and lots of play, lots of process. It takes a lot of time. We, we record. Because videotape is pretty cheap, I um, just put a tape in, push play, or push record, and basically record everything that we happen, and then I'll set, set up that night, kind of watch it, and pick out bits and pieces and show them back and say, look, look what you did. And they're like, whoa, cool. And then they want to do more. Um, once we get involved, the biggest, the biggest trick is to get them to do it as a performance instead of using the editor to say, okay, now we're going to make this go across like this, and then we're going to have these, all these footballs kind of rolling toward the camera. And what they want to do is record this, some sort of strange background, and then 
set it up and say, okay, now and then take everything down, stop the camera, and then bring the footballs and move the camera on the floor and roll the footballs toward the camera and say, that. and the problem is that that gets so time consuming that it takes 30 to 45 minutes to shoot one piece that will last maybe you know, two minutes. And so we have to really, I, I really have to work to put them into the um, performance mode. This is something that happens in one stage. So you'll have one person that does this, the other people ready, ready, okay, now start rolling the footballs. But we want this up. Well, move the camera on the floor so you can roll the footballs to the camera. Leave this thing, have all this stuff out so that you can do it as, as, a, as a live action performance piece instead of video editing tricks to make it more interesting. And, and um, that's the toughest pro problem, and that just, just is just a lot of practice. I encourage them to have a message, we, or at least a theme, try and get a message. So it's a day at a circus, it's clowns, it's, um, it's about something. Instead of just, you know, bells and whistles, fun, let's throw lots of stuff at the camera. I want them to, to throw stuff at the camera for a reason. Is it about rain? Is it about acid rain? Is it about racism? Is it about how to tie your shoe? Is it about making a hot dog? Give lots of options and give lots of things. Okay, well, everybody bend over and pick up a pencil. You know, you drop your pencil, pick it up. Now make it visually interesting to pick up that pencil. That's all your video has to be about. I don't push them too much to say, okay, you have to do something about a major, like, acid rain or an environment or the pol political issues. I find that if I push that, they clutch, but if I say it could be easy, like picking up a pencil, how to tie your shoe, um, how to clean up a room, that frees them up to think, oh, well, that was easy, so now I can do more. And then they always try and put more into it. And some are more, it depends on the personality. Some take on big issues and others just do something simple. I don't worry about that, really. It's it's this the 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 space. I mean, I, w I want them to think of it in terms of the space and how to manipulate the space. Um, um, I'm trying to think more.
document events. You can document the riot downtown. You can document the construction of the new arena. Um, you can use it as an art form in terms of um, just like the movies that you see downtown. I mean, that's that's uh, it's its own art form. But I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm trying to give it a little different twist, so that it's it's almost like short short two-minute experimentations with visual imagery, sort of like a collage. If I assign students to do a collage in, in, a, in an intro to art class, I'll say, maybe we'll do surrealism, and I'll say, I use, use the elements of scale and rhythm and create a collage with the stuff, and I throw it out at them. And when I'm thinking in terms of video, I'm thinking in terms of A, just a different media that you may not understand, but here's a, an approach that might cause you to see the media in a different way. I don't really have a a set goal end in mind and saying, you know, this is going to be a, a great thing you can hang on your wall. I think that I think they're wonderful things. I'd love to see them as as commercials on television instead of buy Dr Pepper. See, I've got some right here. Um, it's sort of like, oh, what was that? Oh, wasn't that neat? Yeah, how'd they do that? And, to, and just to try and, and just as, as visual entertainment, I guess? Yeah, maybe visual entertainment. I haven't thought this through a lot. Is that's what it's all about? Is it's, it's a yeah. something, turn on the camera, just do this, and then turn off the camera. It all has to deal with time, time and composition. I mean, how do you deal with this space right here? Yeah, and, and it's not just this space, but it's also this space. And so what I'm trying to do is get them to think in, in composition in 3D terms. And that's what, I mean, when I talk about sculpture, it's the three-dimensional composition. It, I always talk about we're doing these sandstone heads right now. I don't have any out, but they, they look at them like this. And I say, okay, great. What about like that? Oh, I didn't really think about What about the back? Oh, I haven't thought about it. Well, sculpture, to me, you have to think about all sides of it. I mean, this is much more interesting like this now that one leg is gone. Visually, it's very dynamic. So you, So that's what I'm doing with the video. And I'm just... One of the, I think the important things is I don't want them to feel <coughs> sculpture is carving clay, sculpture is modeling stone, or carving stone, or modeling clay, or bronze, or, um, I mean, sculpture doesn't have to be bronze. They, and art, the 20th century art has always sort of been pushing the limits of what you can do um, in any media, and drawing on film. I mean, you're, you're taking a vi the video of the action and the movement and the place and the setting and a lot of emotion and all that stuff, and then if you take it and you draw on it, you can change it completely. And this is like, well, now don't just think of sculpture as a 3D object, per se. You think of sculpture in terms of space, and I always talk about space a lot. When you even, you know, when we present sculptures in a room, the first day they'll take
take their sculptures like this and they'll put them on the table. This is a real condensed version, but they all tend to take the sculptures and they set them on the table when we do little wire things, like these little wire people that are hanging up here. And they all set them real close together. And I say, okay, now, first of all, sculpture is about space and how things interrelate. Like this, all you see is a massive, massive jumble of stuff. And so I move this one over here, and I move this one over here, and I move this one over here. And I, okay, now you can deal with the space around them, and you can see them as individual things, or you can see them as, as together, but it's not just a jumble. And so when I talk about the space, so when I talk about the video pieces, I really want them to deal with this spatial aspect in a different way. Instead of just making an object, you use this, what you have. And so you don't have, I want them to feel that they, they I, want them, I want the students to learn that they aren't um, um, confined by quote unquote traditional media in making art. I want them to realize that just because you know, I was really good at clay and modeling, and I did that neat sandstone thing in Mr. Paul's class, that now I don't have clay and I don't have sandstone. I didn't know what to do. Well, do you have a camcorder? Do you have a backyard with trees? I mean, you, I want them to be able to break out of a traditional mold of, oh, art is something in particular. Art isn't necessarily an object. It's how you, how you interact with objects and space and Etc. Yeah. Next. Did we do any more? Or are you guys tired? We had some with Lenny and Clark. Yeah, did, did, he, did he go? And then I sent him to the. Okay, let me think. I have to think about which works that, I, that we did. We had. Um, Right, the day at the oh, circus. The one the, well, the, the yeah, the, the headache the headache was with the birdcage. They hated doing that, by the way. They they told me, oh, I mean, this was a great class, but that the performance art, I just, I didn't really like that. Of course, that wasn't, the girl that was in the birdcage enjoyed it. The headache going, ah, oh, she was the actor. The other one that was sort of making the sounds and directing back here beside, she just wasn't really into it, but she was, Real interestingly, she was really into surrealism, and she made all these wonderful, like Cornell sculptures and Dali type stuff. The sculptures based on Dali and stuff. Um, the candle group. The candle group. That was kind of fun. Yeah, they did. They were the group that one of the groups that didn't want to have their faces in there, and so I had them said, well, don't put your faces in. Move them out. Just blow the candles back and forth. They enjoyed it a lot. They, they were real surprised that it turned out as well as it did. There was, I'm trying to think of which other ones I did. The hot dog. The hot dog. They liked that. They thought that was fun. They, they, I'm trying to think what they liked about it. Was that the little, uh, little hand? Oh, the hand walking. Yeah, wasn't that neat? That was one of my first experiments with the idea of space, and that came from actually having a camera set up in my in the room here playing and one day I, I brought my son in and he was I think eight at the time and we had I think that was the year you had all the monitors set up around the room so there were all these monitors all over this big empty space and I was playing with the camera and I had him in here and he said dad wouldn't it be neat to put the camera up on the ceiling and I was like Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, I know. Why don't we put it on the floor? I hadn't even thought of it. And he suggested the ceiling, so I thought, well, then floor. Took it off and set it on the floor. It's like, wow. And I got that, yeah, that, just that completely different perspective. And it's like that long line. And I was like, oh, this will work. And so I dragged things through, and we put these bamboo sticks. And then when I saw the bamboo sticks got this nice sense of depth, I came from the side with my hand and just walked all the way down and it made it such, seem like such a big space that's actually one of my favorites it's just that nice it's very sort of calming it's not a visual world oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one was really ben? Nice. yeah that was ben right 
and he was sort of walking and, and yeah, I like that. And the nice thing about that is I got, he was doing his thing and he did it once and then I said, okay, now go back and do it again. And I put like the, the effects on the tracer effects or something. Okay, and now do it again. We'll do it on strobe. And now, and then there were some girls playing back here. One girl who hadn't done hardly anything because she didn't feel like she had any ideas. And um, there was that, not a mirror ball, but that mirror fabric. fabric. And she was just holding that up playing. And then it sort of sparkled on him. It's like, oh, 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 do that more. And as he walks up, and she used the sunlight and just sort of sparkled on him. And it helped the whole effect of stuff. And I made everybody else talk real loud. Just start talking and don't stop. And that helped them. Just, they all sort of get absorbed. Well, it's funny you mentioning the, you know, the notion of a commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, Corey was uh, doing the Hell's Gate Sentinel project in Mock Shot, and it went for like an hour and 20 minutes, wow. something like that. So we took, uh, I can't remember what class period it was, we were, and it's like, <coughs> split them up into like little three minutes, or you know, little three oh. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like little now back to the trial was the end because I had like go on for about fifteen minutes. Commercial break, you know. Oh neat. Just, yeah. yeah. I don't know, it was the trial didn't turn out well because of you know, the audio. Yeah. Like the commercials oh. are great. <laughs> good. Good. Well it yeah. I actually did that in England, some video artist there about a year ago or something like that. I actually got
exactly. And um, be careful of the bells and whistles because as soon as you turn the tracer on, they'll go, oh, cool, and they'll all want to use it because it's like, whoa, that's really neat. They're really into that stuff. And um, play. Play with the media. Play with it on your own. I mean, when the kids aren't there and you're relaxed and you can turn the music that you want to listen to on and turn it up really loud, and that's, that's what I did. I'd come in and turn the camera on and turn all the stuff on and come up here late at night and just kind of go, wow, what happens with this? What, what, what happens with that? So having an inventory of props. Yes, yeah, lots of props, lots of stuff. I mean, fabric, tubes, one of my favorite things is, a, um, well, these were good. You'll see these. Or you, if you see the video, you'll see these. And these were, and I, and I just kept them because they were visually interesting. And um, learn how the camera works because I'm still learning, but the focus is really important. <laughs> out of focus it's like how come that doesn't work right but these things rotated in front of the screen make some really neat effects and um, I had well with found objects I do a lot but if you take something and put it over the lens
can run the bulb and the fan motor and try a white balance on the light she produces.
Okay. 